Are you a coach, consultant, small business owner, or online entrepreneur? Do you want to significantly grow your business, triple your list, and double your sales conversions? If the answer is yes, then launching a podcast is the next step. You see, being an expert in your field, having a website is no longer enough to be noticed in today's marketplace. I call it the influencer effect. Being an influencer is the key. You see, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And having your own podcast helps people to connect with you. If you're interested in having me help you launch your own podcast, grow your influence, and promote your business, then go to InfluencerGrowthFormula.com. That's InfluencerGrowthFormula.com. And let me help you rise to the top. And now, welcome to Like a Boss, insights with influencers, creatives, online entrepreneurs, and badasses like you. Here is your hostess, Heather Havenwood, Chief Sexy Boss, helping you rise to the top. Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Heather Havenwood. So this show is going to be quite interesting. Um, I'm going to be interviewing someone who is a mentor of mine, has been for many, many years, a coach of mine, and someone that I worked for many, many years ago is actually the reason why I have my book, Sexy Boss. So Alex Mendozian, welcome. Thank you. I, I hope Carol Mendozian, my mother, is listening because she still doesn't know what I do, but Thank you for that intro. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I'm going to, if you don't know who Alex Mendozian is, I'm going to share with you a little bit about who he is. Uh, since 1993, Alex has generated over nearly $410 million in sales and profits for his marketing students, students, clients, and joint venture partners on six different continents. I love that. He has shared stage with diverse leaders such as Sir Richard Branson, Larry King, Maureen Williamson, Tony Robert, Robbins, Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, Caesar Orman, a Dalai Lama, and two U.S. presidents, presidences, and best-selling author Harvey McKay. All right, now I love this. He's he has over twenty-two thousand hours of training experience, and his lifetime goal with his colleague Jack Canfield is to influence over one million other trainers by his seventy-seventh birthday. Well, since you're only twenty-five, well, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so this is going to be fun. This is super fun. Just to get people an understanding, I used to work for Alex uh, at one point, and then he's been a mentor and coach of mine for many years. I've met you, Paul, when did I first meet you? Probably 2003, in the big seminar days. Yeah, I think uh, 2003, yeah. 2003. And he's here today to talk about the number one thing that I think most solo entrepreneurs and coaches have the most challenge with, which is... Sales. The, the, well, the risk of rejection. I mean, they want sales, but the reason they don't get it is because they're anticipating rejection. And we're going to eviscerate, not handle it, not obliterate, eviscerate it oh. so it's no longer. Eviscerate. Yeah. Eviscerate. Okay. I love that word. Now, talk about rejection. Let's talk about that for a second. So if you're watching the video, you probably see my shirt, Being the Boss is Sexy. And many of you might know that Heather Havenwood and me I actually have a book out called Sexy Boss. But I want to share this story with you about rejection. And this is a story that has to do with you, Alex. Back in 2007, I believe, I was standing in my house in Florida just realizing that I had just gotten hit by this, the downturn coming and going to be going through personal bankruptcy as well as my house is going to foreclosure. And I was like dealing with the reality of that like coming down the pipe and I couldn't stop it. And I was on the phone with you and I was sharing pretty much in tears. And you said, one day you're going to share your story about this. And I think my response was somewhere in the cussing words of F you or something. And no, not somewhere. It yeah. was F you, F you, F you, F you, F you, right? <laughs> yes. Because why? I didn't want to share those bruises that skinned me that broken bone because I didn't want to be rejected by the world. I didn't Plus want to be rejected in it. by my you parents. You were in it, right? So it's, it's yeah. hard. When you're inside the gift, 
you don't want to look at the ribbon of the gift. Forget about the gift. When people go, think about the gift. Screw you. I'm inside the box. I don't want to look at the red ribbon outside the box because I can't see it. I'm pissed right now. And so you were there, but um, I'm glad you're acknowledging it now. And it actually, I, I'm, I'm touched by that because... Um, that's you know, true. you've never told me that before. No, so, hey. it was because of you that I decided to write my book, Sexy Boss, to, in 2000, and it published 2013, because it's my personal story. Mm. It had, when I wrote that book, I really thought about that day when you told me, like, one day you're going to share this story and you're going to help others. And when you're in the, like you call it, the gift, you don't feel it could help anybody. You know, and so when I wrote that book, it was not out of, I want to be a number one bestseller or any of that stuff. It was just, I wanted to get my story out. And the, the success goal, my goal was if one person bought it and read it and got something out of it, it was equal to a success. That's a good you, goal. That's you, a good. Taught, you taught me that you're like, not everything has to be this like push to whatever. Sometimes it's overcoming that rejection. One of the things that when I published it, this goes back to what we're talking about today. One of the things that when I'm, I remember publishing it, and I remember being like, oh my God, people are going to now know publicly that I went through bankruptcy. It's very different when my friends and family know, but on a, when it's public, like true public, then there's like, feels like the scrutiny. You know what it I mean? Sucks. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, oh. I haven't been through bankruptcy, but I know the humiliation of losing everything. Yeah. And then for some reason, even though they don't obsess about it, I believe that everyone is thinking about how much of a failure I am. And I'm yeah. sure you felt the same way. Yeah. It's like, it could be, some people it's divorce. Some people it's a wreck. Some people it's loss of family. Mine, because in my view, and this goes back to what we're talking about today, my view, I'm smart and intelligent. That never happens to me, right? And here I am dealing with it. Circumstances out of my control, some were, some not, some my res full responsibility. Right. And then now I'm publicly publicly sharing my scars and scrapes and bruises and I'm like oh my god but there's huge healing in that so what we're talking about today your new podcast say go ahead and share everybody what your new podcast is about you know this is a uh, shameful um mm -hmm. guilt is internal shame is public right so the reason I feel ashamed is because I wrote a book in 2007 <laughs> you Paul did you Collin, a good friend marketing <laughs> partner and uh we uh, did a lot of uh, stuff together. I was there during that launch. Podcasting Secrets, which I, mm -hmm. I know, I know. And so we wrote this book called The Business Podcasting Bible in 2007. I launched my first podcast in 2018. Really? Really? Like 14 years later? And so my excuse is that, all right, now iTunes has over 1 billion users so therefore that's your excuse I felt they were <laughs> so uh, just to be clear worthy everyone, of having my podcast on so, so just, exactly. to be clear, just to be and, clear and so the, the question is okay what what is the topic yeah so just to be clear the student the student beat the mentor because i started mine in 2013 how cool is that that's clear that's well, that's clear. I mean, and it shouldn't be any other way, in my opinion. But um, the way it worked out for me, I, I launched it April 2nd, 2018. And it's called All Selling Aside. And I'm glad I did it the way I did it. Because uh, I can deal with the uh, emotional havoc of, of shame and guilt of coming out after all these years. Because it's 25 years of sales and marketing wisdom that is distributed in 25 minute chunks every week, Monday after Monday after Monday. And it's not an interview show like this. It, it's, a, it's a content based show. So I'm, I'm very proud of it. And we got all the way up to 21 on uh, iTunes uh, above Damon John and a bunch of other people who were well known. And the, the, the premise is it is for people who hate to sell. It is for people like coaches, consultants, service professionals who hate to sell. So I thought, wow, that, this is a lot of people out there. It, they're in either denial of hating to sell or they're publicly announcing that they hate to sell. So let me show you a way to do it. And the way we do it is 
seeding, as in sprinkling seeds, through storytelling is the new selling. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. And, you know, we, we put out one episode per week. So uh, I, I don't have the, the reach that you have yet, but thank yeah. you for Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Stop it. Yes. You have the reach already. You have the reach. I just, but I, so sales, you know, sales is a big one. Um, but let's move into what you said at the beginning. What is really sales? It's the fear. It's the rejection piece. Let's, can you move more into the mindset around that part? Well, the reason people don't like to sell, which is enrolling someone or winning someone's heart mm-hmm. and their head is because they're afraid of someone saying no. Right. Now, that's typically the reason why they don't like to sell. Now, here's what I know. And this is something one of my colleagues, uh, Jeffrey Gitterman says, people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. So rather than selling, which is kind of like an exclamation point, it's a, it's a spear. If you look at the exclamation point, it looks kind of like a spear with that little dot underneath. Yeah. I like to ask questions, which is a hook. That, that's the question mark is more powerful than the exclamation point. And that pulls people in. Rather than pushing them away, it's pulling them in. And so if you can enroll them through questions, And you focus not on their return on investment they're going to get from you, which is ROI. You focus on their, what we call COI, cost of inaction. Mm -hmm. And now you're not doing what most people do when they sell. They're focusing 80% of their time on point B and how possible that is versus spending 80% of your time on point A and how screwed up it is and not defying the laws of nature and uh, truly identifying where you're at and how effed up people truly are. Because we don't have a a GPS system where like with Uber, you type in the location of where you want to go and then the satellite knows where you're at. We don't have that in human uh, intervention with, uh, you know, self-awareness. So, I believe you have to spend more time in identifying what your cost of inaction is and what the cost is month after month, week after week of not taking the action that you need to take in order to be where you want to be, which is point B. So that's the difference. Okay. So a couple of things that I heard that I want to really make sure we highlight, which is I love the analogies. I love analogies. So I love the analogy. We talk about the spear, which is the exclamation point versus the question mark, which is the hook, which is right. So you taught me that years ago when I was in your teleseminar secrets course, as well as worked with you on that a little bit. And part of that is like being able to ask questions. What was the thing you taught me? What's your single biggest question? What's your single biggest challenge now in X, right? And when you actually ask the question, they will tell you what they're needing. And then that's where you feed it to them. Now, where did I learn this? You. So you're one of my you know, biggest mentors back then. Look, you've learned it from other people. It, yeah. It's just the way I expressed it that, you know, you, you got hooked in. That's all. Well, you, you share it in such a way, in a storytelling way, that I remember it specifically in my head more. What's your single biggest question on the challenge, right? Your challenge of uh, getting more clients, the challenge of getting more clients to buy cars, to, you know, to finding the date, the love of your life, whatever it is. I mean, what's your single biggest challenge in X? And they will tell you what that challenge is. And that is where you, the person selling the services, is where you can start to deliver either yes or no. We have that service to help you with that challenge. Okay, but let's talk about your show and who are you focused on? Are they who are you focused on? I mean, Greg Cardone talks about sales, right? But he's focused on like big companies and car sales and stuff like that. What do you what do you focus on? I focus on a coach. Now, my avatar is Coach Carla, and the majority of my list, sixty five percent of my list, are women. Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just the way I teach. Forty five percent are men. That means fifty percent more women than men, but we'll just call Coach Carla, Coach Carl. So whether you're listening right now, watching right now, you're a man or a woman, here's who my ideal listener is because it is not a video show, it's an audio show. Number one, they make less than $100,000 a year. They wanna make more than $100,000 a year. They may have lied and they've said they've made more than $100,000 a year coaching, but they make less than $100,000 a year. Number two, they hate to be sold manipulatively. 
They hate being manipulated. I mean, whether they're manipulated with uh, a digital marketing campaign that's out there or something that is offline, maybe it could be a neuro-linguistic programming you know, process that someone has gone after yeah. them. Hate, they hate to be manipulated. Um, number three, they love to have sincere interaction because they're a great coach. Yeah. They're good, at, they're good at what they do. So they yeah. love sincere interaction and they have this competing intention because they believe that sincere interaction and enrollment, which is selling, there, there, there's a, there's a conflict there and there isn't. There isn't. There's, there's no a, conflict. There's no conflict. And so like, I'm just going to construct the word enrollment. Um, that's used a lot in a particular company called Landmark Education and other companies too. What that really means is just selling, right? So it's, it's a new, ter- it's, a, it's a softer term because the term of selling people get all offended, but enrolling people in for some reason has a different connotation to it. So I think that's interesting. The second thing is that as myself as a sales and marketing coach and also helping people launch people's podcasts, one of the things that I constantly deal with is this rejection piece. Like, well, it, they had this view and I've had, this wasn't me, this was some a potential client. They said, well, I just want to be able to sit back and have them come to me. I want to attract. Honestly. Right. I want to attract. Like, you know. It's like someone watching the movie, The Law of Attraction, and hoping Vishnu is going to land something on their lap, right? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so how do you, if you're, in, I, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I apologize. But it's. Very common in the coaching community, right? Because they're life coaches or, and I'm not, not, not to see Nick, because a lot of those people are my friends, but life coaches and, and whatever, miracle coaches and, and yoga coaches and fitness coaches or whatever, and they just have this view, I'm really good at X, people will come to me, you know, do well and they will come you know, build it, they will come kind of thing. I think it's one of the worst movies ever because they created people will come. That's not true. You still had to sell people to come to the basketball game, baseball game, or football game to get their asses in the seats. So how do you help people overcome that or coaches overcome it? Coach Carla. Well, rather than having a discovery session or a sales presentation and having them come to that, what we teach is having them come to an intake, an assessment, which is a questionnaire that takes somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes to complete. It takes time. We even ask them for a small deposit for a no-show fee in case they don't show up for the, for the physical you know, discovery session. And I teach our coaches to have the questions done in a certain way in order to have them super enthusiastic and super motivated to send people to that versus bringing them to the sales presentation where they're going to be converting. So it's kind of like an intermediary step so that it's easier for the coaches to promote a web page with a questionnaire on SurveyMonkey or um, some other survey platform versus coming directly to the sales presentation. And the, the cool part of the whole process is before they even get to human interaction, because I don't believe in B2C, business to consumer, B2B, business to business, B2G, business to government. I don't believe in all that. Or B2P, business to patient, if you're in medical services. It's all about H to H. And Ryan Ryan Dice, who lives in Austin, just like you do. I mean, he, he taught me that several years ago and he's one of the annoying ones. He was once my student, he's, he's now my teacher. And, H to H means human to human. I talk about this all the time, yeah. And and if you get um, pre-qualification and prospecting done prior to human to human interaction, then you're not going to be rejected because most of the people have already left. They're not going to be part of that process. So that's the way we handle it. We send them to the intake and the assessment versus sending them to a discovery session or a, a, a conference call, um, which we typically do on Zoom because we like to see people. Right. We don't like people multitasking. Uh, I'm not, not to, so first of all, the H to H, I talk about it all the time, human to human interaction, because at the end, and this is why I share, and I learned it from Ryan Dice, I just took it to the next level, which is at the end of the day, I always bring up the Bible, one of the best selling books on the planet, right? The, 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 the best selling of all time. Best selling of all time, and one of the best books to teach sales, by the way. Um, 
talks about at the end of the day, that's why the book is still viable today. You can open the book and understand it because why is dealing with H to H, still with human to human, right? And we as human beings haven't changed that much. We just haven't. I mean, we now have iPods and iPhones, but at the end of the day, we still haven't changed that much. I no. mean, you know, that's why we can understand, you know, the, the biblical conversations, the biblical stories, storytelling, seeding, understanding. We can understand that because we're still human you know, thousands and thousands of years later. So, okay, great. So I love this process. You take them to the intake form and then the discovery channel. What else do you teach? And I love, by the way, I just want to acknowledge this. I remember when at one point you and I were having um, dinner and whatnot, we were at a mastermind at Dice's event and we were talking about um, the all selling the side podcast name. And <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't like the name. <laughs> But I didn't want to tell you that. You're about to launch it. But I actually like it now. I'm giving you some kudos. So actually, I really like it. So I'm giving you like a Well, thank you. I, I didn't come up with the name. Um, uh, Michael uh, Lovich, who runs uh, Baby Bathwater Institute, came up with it at a mastermind in Montreal one time. And I thought, damn, that's a great name because all selling aside, here's what you need to do. So yeah. I got it. I registered it. And... Uh, Maybe I love just, Michael Lovich. He's crazy. One with the crazy hair. He's, he is crazy. He is crazy, but he, he's a crazy smart. genius. But it kind of crept up on you, so I think uh, I think it snuck up on it's, you. It I, snuck up on me. Now I'm like, I get it. Because yeah. I'm such a salesperson, it was like, why would you put the selling aside? But what you're doing is you're tapping into Coach Carla, C Coach Carl, which is like, they don't want to deal with that. They want to put that selling aside. So you're tapping into their desire, which is that's correct want to deal with the cells. Yeah. And, and a few of the things about coach Carla and coach Carl is um, they don't like the interaction of the sale. Not only do they dislike selling, which is the, I mean, th that is the boon, not the bane, but the boon of their existence in business. Yeah. Um, they don't like that interaction. So the way we do the discovery session is we don't focus on return on investment. I mean, now ROI selling is very um, possible and is, is very effective if you have a reputation. But if you don't have a reputation, you can't really promise ROI. You can't yeah. promise them that they're going to get a return on investment. You can right. provide them electricity to the light switch, mm -hmm. but they got to flip the switch. So when people say, Alex, I'm paying you $100,000 for a year. What's my guarantee? I tell them, here's my guarantee. You will never see that $100,000 again. <laughs> and if they don't laugh, I know they're not going to be a client. So the, the way we structure the discovery session, I, I, I'm serious. That's the way I, I know. I know you do. And I know you, but I just, I can imagine they don't laugh. You think to yourself, yeah, they're not going to do it. But if no. they laugh, it's like, they know. They, they know get it's like anything itself. It's like, you spent $100,000 on a car. You still I have, a car, I have busted my butt for my kids not to be codependent on me. I have busted my ass for my employees not to be codependent on me. Why should I have my, my, uh, my clients to be codependent on me? I don't, I don't want that. I need to cut the umbilical cord from the get-go. So what we do is we identify point B, which is ROI. Like, where do you want to be a year from now? Great. Right. Then we say, what do you want to make a year from now? That's revenue. That's my basis of people want to make money with me. Great. Okay. So you want to make 20,000 a month. That's fantastic. Now, those are the only two questions we focus on with ROI. The rest is all on COI, which is an acronym I coined, which is cost of inaction. So I say, what are you making right now? They'll say, uh, I'm making 5,000 a month. And that may be a lie. We don't know if it's true or not. I go, great. So then if you do the math where you want to be 20 K a month, you're making 5 K right now. That's $15,000 a month. You are losing by not making the change you need to make. And they go, whoa, 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 time out, Alex. I'm not going to coach with you yet. You, I said, I don't even know if you need to coach with me, and I have no idea if I want you to coach with me. I'm not talking about you coaching with me. I'm talking about you need to make a change in order to make the 20K where you want to be. And then sometimes, mm -hmm. parenthetically, I'll say moron in my mind, but that's not so nice, but I'm still human. So I kind of put that in there. So it's like 15,000 bucks a month and you, you can fill in the blank how much it is per year. So they go, how do you know I need to make a change? And my response is because you're here. If you didn't yeah. need to make a yeah. change, why are we talking? I mean, in fact, 
I don't even want to continue unless you have absolute and 100% commitment to making a change. Do you want to make a change? Yes or no? Yes. People need to make a change, right? So they say yes, and then they continue. If they say no, which they rarely do, I say then conversation is over. Because And how long is that, you call that, is that the discovery channel? How long is that conversation? If the conversation goes well, <laughs> it's 45 minutes. If it, if it gets, um, uh, you know, sidetracked or booby trapped, or if it gets hijacked by their, you know, unsupported Stop. beliefs, it'll last 10 minutes. Okay. I yeah, do you, that's a great question. How do you know you're like, this is not going anywhere? Do you, do you start off asking certain questions and then somewhere along the way you start selling? Like I just or, did. Like I just like did. That. Like I'll say, um, you need to make a change. And they said, well, I don't need to make a change. I go, well, if you don't think you need to make a change, conversation is over right now. And then I'll say, what roadblocks are getting in the way from where you want to be? Now, they told me where they want to be. So they say, I don't have any roadblocks. I said, well, if you don't have any roadblocks, why aren't you there? Right? And so that, that's, the when, that's when I stopped the conversation. And then around question 10, I'll say, okay, what's your biggest takeaway you've gotten from this discovery session so far, which I think is an awesome question because I'm asking them to give me feedback on what they've gener- you know, the, the, the biggest takeaway they've gotten from a sales conversation. Right. And then, I, then I ask them on a scale of one to 10, how motivated and inspired are they to making a change as a result of what they've heard so far? Now, they'll typically never give me a 10. So when they say eight, I'll say, why didn't you rate it lower? They're expecting me to say what would make it a 10. I say, why don't you rate it lower? And I learned that from a, a colleague and a mentor of mine. And then they defend the eight. And I said, what would make it a 10? And they say, well, this, what, this is what needs to happen in order to make it a 10. Well, great. I can't continue until it is a 10 because I'm not asking you to come on board. I'm asking you to be committed and inspired and motivated to making a permanent change you need to make it, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Can you do that? And they go, yes. I go, great. Is it okay if I share with you the three ways I can offer you of what making change looks like? And that's my pitch. And then that's your pitch. And then you go into your offers. Five minutes, five minutes. And then I start high and then I drop very steep and then I drop again. So for me, and if you're watching this or listening, I hope you're sitting, it's a hundred thousand US dollars, not nine ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-seven. Okay, it's a hundred K. I deserve the round numbers. Then it drops to thirty, then it drops to twelve. I don't have anyone at twelve. I just have thirty K and hundred K, and this is generated over $2 million a year just from this narrow part of the business. Well, was- in the podcast, you're pretty much giving this whole thing away. I mean, right? I, I am. I am. But the call to action in the podcast is to come to All Selling Aside, which they go to the intake. And uh, because of the podcast, which is amazing, I, I talked to a mutual friend of ours, you know, Roland Fraser, who's the smartest business person I know. I said, dude, I used to have like five to six intakes completed. After the podcast, I have 15 a week, a week. It used to be five to six a week. Now it's 15 a week. And so the podcast has generated over $200,000 in the first three months. And I don't know of other podcasts that do that. Maybe through sponsors they do, but I mean, that's, that's super cool. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm, I'm not keeping it to myself. I love bragging about it because it's like, I love the idea. (laughs) I love myself. It's so Right, exactly. Because my mom, Carol, still doesn't know what I do. So, you know, I got to be self-supported, right? (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to suggest that everyone goes to the intake form. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So what's the intake form? Where can they go and find that? If you go to allsellingaside.com and um, you, there's a, there's a tab at the top um, where, um, you can uh, get uh, mentoring, then that's all you need to see. And you'll see the intake. The intake takes about 10 minutes. Yeah. And then don't do it just to talk to me or to get a discovery. Oh, session. I will. I'm going to go through it and we're going to talk again. I'm sure. I'm sure. 
and I've already taught this to you, but the, you the goal yeah. is not to focus on ROI mm -hmm. because coaches can't teach or sell that way. The goal is to talk about COI. Um, you know, Bob Proctor taught me this many years ago. He said, you know, most people talk about where they want to be, which is their vision. But man, you know, what's more important is where you are right now, which is point A. Why don't you spend the majority of your time, which for me is 80% of the time, defining point A versus figuring how to get to point B. And I thought, damn, that's it. You know, when you hear something like that. That's so, really good. Yeah. I love Bob Proctor. Okay, so, all right, this is really good. Now, can someone who's listening who's not a coach use the same construct? Yeah, I want, some, well, it, it, the whole process is designed for people who are afraid of their shadow. Introverts who don't like to talk to people, who don't like to interact. That's me. Yeah, who just don't, oh, come on, please. You, you like to <laughs> But I'm an introvert. I mean, I recharge privately, but when I'm on, I need to be on like right. now or on stage. But th this is designed for people who hate to sell. And that's in the description on iTunes. It's for coaches, consultants, service professionals, anyone in business who hates to sell. I think I'm scooping up the majority of business people <laughs> you know, in, in the world. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's, it sells is a... Sales is interesting. I've been listening to a lot of Grant Cardone who does a lot of sales. His, his technique I don't really resonate with. Um, the, but he's committed it, to it. He is he's committed, committed to it. it. And that's, and I, the key, that's the key to sales is being committed to the technique. And he's he good. And, but the technique that, he's, that he teaches is very hard sales. And only a specific kind of person can really say, I can do that too. That's correct. What I'm saying like, okay, I love that you're doing that grant. I love you. You're amazing. I love that. That's great. And you're committed to it, but I can't emulate you. I can't emulate I'm attracted that. to that. So like I'm a good prospect for grant, but my people are not a good cross. That's what I'm saying. Like I, yeah. I Right. I can, I can see myself because I used to do that. I used to be an outside sales. I used to, I used to walk past these big signs called no solicitation. I just walk right past them and say, hello. You got no, comp you got no competition. I mean, right. why wouldn't you do that? Right. I did. That's how I became in one of the country. Cause I would look for the signs, no solicitation and I'd walk past it. But I mean, a lot of people can't do that. And I respect that. So, you know, you, what you're teaching is more of a, a process that people that, don't like that hardcore selling, right? Could do. I mean, I talked to someone uh, like a couple of years ago, and I know you. This is about you too. But as a salesperson, I love to be sold. Like I freaking love it. I mean, when I bought my Lexus, I made her name was Camden go through everything. And she knew I was already a yes. I'm like, no you're going to have to sell me again. I mean, like, she's like, Oh my God. It's because I'm like, I need you to sell me. Yeah. You know, I love the process of being sold. It's cathartic. I mean, when you buy a Tesla, Ryan Dice tells this story, they have this thing called the launch and they put you in some obscure straightaway street that there's no, you know, officer, cop, whatever, you know, and they tell you to just, put the accelerated down to the floor and initially they don't do it and they go, no, let's go back. So they back up again. They go, put it down to the floor. And then the Tesla just takes off. It's faster than a, you know, Ferrari. And it goes from like zero to 60 in like three seconds. Right. And you tell yourself, all right, I'm buying this thing. This, <laughs> this is cool. Right. <laughs> I'm done. What do I sign? I, that's, that's, I think I remember was, I was there one time he was telling that story. It's true. And I think, that, I mean, I, I love to be sold. So, all right. I want to wrap it up for everyone, our listeners. Uh, where can they find you? Find, find you working for the Intech Forum or the podcast, whatever you like. Allsellingaside.com, just like it sounds. And you can go straight to the iTunes podcast from there. And uh, that webpage will give you the notes of all my episodes. It's free. And it's 25 years of sales and marketing know-how. And I'd like to think wisdom uh, chunked down to 25 minutes every week, week after week, every Monday. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for being a friend and a mentor and 
now my guest on my show, which is really super cool. Uh, I love that. All right, everyone, this is Heather Havenwood. Go check out Alex at allsellingaside.com. And you can check out our shows at heatherhavenwood.com. Have you ever wanted to stop the nine to five grind and start your own company? Do you want to have more control of your income and your time? Then now is that moment to start and grow a successful business. As a female entrepreneur, I have succeeded. I have bit the dust. I have bounced back to growth and prosperity. But this would not have been possible without first taking the leap and owning my own business. But I didn't do it alone. I hired my first business coach 13 years ago. And now I help small businesses, solo practitioners and professionals double their income and triple their time off. So let me help you too. My gift to you today is a free one-on-one strategy session. So go to coachwithheather.com, coachwithheather.com, and let me help you double your income and triple your time off. Thank you for listening to Like a Boss, helping you rise to the top. Join Heather's Mastermind at InfluencerTribe.com, where she helps you become an influencer and dominate your field. Follow Heather Havenwood on Instagram. Interested in interviewing or scheduling a call with Heather? Go to CallWithHeather.com. For more, go to HeatherHavenwood.com.